personal. It's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing games were missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so another day, another failed drug test in the sport of boxing. I'm sure most of you guys have heard, but if you haven't, let me inform you that Robert Hellenius has, in fact, failed a VADA drug test. Now, this is very surprising because, not because, you know, Hellenius isn't capable of cheating or, or, or any fighter isn't capable of cheating, but it's really kind of surprising based on how he performed against Anthony Joshua. Um, he didn't have, he it didn't look like a fighter that was on steroids, just, just being honest, because he got knocked the hell out, and that's just what it is. However, uh, Robert Hellenius, you know, according to Matchroom, has failed a lot of tests for adverse analytical findings, right? And uh, it's funny, right? Like, and, and, and I really want to continue to raise these questions, you know, not, not you know, because I, I I personally think fighters should be allowed to take whatever they want just as long as they report within a certain amount of days. I actually think they'd be safer for the sport than trying to have this like holier than thou moral compass of like, oh, we got to clean up the sport. No, you guys aren't interested in cleaning up the sport. Cut the BS. You don't care. If you cared, this would have been corrected years ago. So, um, you know, like he took a test on the 11th of this month. So August 11th, he took a test. Uh, the positive test came back on the 12th and Matchroom did not reveal this information until uh, yesterday, which was the 25th. So you're telling me it took you two weeks to tell the public that Robert Laney has failed the PED test? I mean, I don't know, man. I, I, don't, I, don't like, I don't like what's going on. And look, Matchroom has just been taking L's left and right. First you had Alicia Bumgarner. Uh, no, no. First you had Dillian White. Then you had Alicia Bumgarner. Now you have Robert Hellenius. Now, when it comes to a lot of the fighters, I'm, 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 I'm just noticing this, and I, I'm not going to say anything that anybody else hasn't said before, but there seems to be a different treatment when it comes to B-side fighters in boxing as opposed to when it's A-side fighters uh, failing a test in boxing. When, when the A-sider A-side fighter fails a drug test in boxing, you know, we, we get promoters sticking up for them. We get them having a chance to clear the name, but when it's the B-side fighters, there's more condemnation. It seems to be a little bit harsher. I mean, for example, just recently, uh, Zolani Tete, you know, the former Bantamweight champion, I believe he was Bantamweight champion. Zolani Tete, the hard punching uh, South African fighter, he just received a four-year ban. They just they just gave him a four-year ban out there in, um, in England. He can't, I think it was four years, something like that. And, uh, they came down on, on him hard. And you gotta ask yourself the question, why would Zolani Tete get a four year ban? But then, you know, when it comes to Connor Ben, when it comes to Alicia Bumgarner, when it even comes to like, you know, just any A side fighter in boxing, why are they not getting four year bans? Well, because all it all comes down to the bottom line. How do you affect the bottom line financially? How do you, uh, and how much money do you put in the promoter's pockets? That, 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 that's what it comes down to. Um, so it, it, it's really just, it's really agitating. Um, and I, and I don't want to highlight this too, because I, I, I'm not dumb. Like I'm not dumb. And I'm sure, like, I know that Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Boxing, they're not speaking clean, but I find it very strange how like, you know, there's no top ring fighters or PBC fighters or even Golden Boy fighters. Like there's not, 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 not none of the fighters from the, like the American based promotional companies are testing positive for steroids. And if they are, it's not happening as frequently as the matchroom fighters, right? So, it's very interesting, you know? I'm, I'm not gonna say too much, but it's just very intriguing, you know? You, there, there's no way you're gonna convince me that all the PBC fighters, all the top ranked fighters, and all the Golden Boy fighters are just squeaky clean. So, it, it, it makes you kind of go, it makes you kind of wonder, you know, what's, what's, what's really going on, you know? Um, Kind of makes me. It kind of takes me back to that time. What was it? Five years ago, when Eddie Hearn got that war chest of money from DAZN, and 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 he he said he was gonna take over the American boxing market. And I almost feel like you know, De La Hoya, PBC, and Bob Arum. They may not like each other. They may disagree on some things when it comes to each other. But when it comes to Eddie Hearn, they're gonna. 
they're gonna they're gonna come together and they're gonna cooperate to take down matchroom boxing and make them look bad in any way they can. And that that that's really how I feel. And it's, it's not I'm not a fanboy of any promotional company. I'm just telling you guys my um, um, objective observation that it's just weird to me that all these matchroom fighters are filling drug tests, but nobody from PBC, Top Rank, or Golden Boy is filling drug tests. And listen, as Victor Conti explained recently. You can weaponize drug testing. As we, as anybody who's known for years, you can weaponize drug testing and boxing. Meaning that, yes, VADA could have the most stringent drug testing. However, um, there is ways to circumvent and get around your fighters being reported for drug testing. Because VADA is an independent drug testing agency. Meaning that they are not working exclusively with the promoters. Meaning that VADA can take a donation. Vada can know who Vada can catch someone, but it's up to the jurisdiction and the and to the discretion of the promoters to report who is failing tests and who is not. Vada will not do that. It is up to the promoters and it is up to ultimately the commissions and, and, and things like that to, to do the right thing and report. Right? So it's just it's just real it's a, it really raises an eyebrow with me about what's going on with drug testing and boxing. And I think, okay. Maybe did Hellenius maybe have something in the system? Yeah, but I mean, listen. And I'm not accusing anybody of anything, but however, people have had their suspicions of Anthony Joshua for years being on the juice. You know, I, I would hope he's not because Anthony Joshua is one of my favorite boxers, and I and I love what he's done for the sport. But I'm not I'm not I'm not foolish either. Like you know, at that level, where there's that much money at stake, and where, where, where that where there's that much things to gain. Money, status, fame, adoration for millions. Those kind of things will make a, a driving man to do all kinds of crazy things, right? So, um, yeah, just, 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 just want to throw that out there. Like, I, I, I do, I do kind of raise my eyebrows that PBC fighters aren't testing positive, right? And 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 you know, a lot of the A side guys with, you know. Other companies like Top Rank and Golden Boy aren't testing positive because there's no way you're gonna convince me that certain fighters. I won't, I won't say any names, but you guys can take your own guess. You guys can even write in the comments if you want which fighters from PBC, Top Rank, and Golden Boy do you think are on the juice? Because there's a quite there's a couple that I really think are on the juice. I'm not gonna say it here because I'm not trying to get a lawsuit. I'm just saying like boxing, and when I say boxing, I mean the industry does not care about. PED testing. They don't care about a safe sport. They just care about making money. Follow the money. That, 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 that's all it's about, right? And the thing is, even if they did care, the reality is this. When there's, that, when, when there, when there's this much money at stake, there's so many scientists and chemists behind the scenes that know how to develop certain masking agents and PEDs that can, that can beat these tests. You, you know... Um, so every time they update the testing and they make it to where they can catch certain substances, you can make things that are undetectable. There are people that specialize in these kind of things. So it's just food for thought. But of course, Robert Hellenius came out and said that, you know, and I'll read you the quotes that he didn't do it. I'll read you guys his quotes for Vanity State of the following end. I quote, I want to say something very clear in my own words right now with absolutely no exception. I did not use any performance enhancement now or ever. I have been tested my entire career. I was just told that I tested positive for the presence of a non-steroid substance in my system and I wanted to send an immediate direct message to Anthony Joshua and boxing fans that I didn't cheat and never would. I volunteer to work with VADA and the British Boxing Board of Control to do whatever it takes to clear my name, Robert Helaney. So, interesting stuff there from Robert Helaney. I'll be honest. Based off of just what I saw in the ring that fight, I don't think Robert Helaney is a PED. That's just me. And Robert Hellenius, like I said earlier in the video, I really do think that there is something bigger going on here. I don't wanna be, I don't wanna sound like a conspiracy theorist or like that I have like a tinfoil hat, but there's just some craziness going on in box right now. And I do think this is bigger than Matchroom. I think this is this is really about, you know, promoters trying to uh get at Eddie Hearn, really, for for for, for how he was a couple years ago when he was on his high horse coming to America, and and you gotta like if you could be honest with yourself, if you could take off your, if you could put down your PBC pom poms, your top rank pom poms, your Golden Boy pom poms, you gotta raise your eyebrows a little bit that PBC fighters 
matchroom fighter or um, golden boy fighters, top rank fighters are not really failing drug tests. Okay, and then you gotta raise your eyebrows even further when Dillian White is getting condemned, Robert Laney is gonna get condemned, but Alicia Bumgarner, um, you know, she's not really getting harsh treatment, right? Zelani Tate just got a multiple year ban in the UK, so uh, boxing. And the worst part of my analogy, boxing is full of shit. We all we all know this, and I just think we really need to get to a place as fight fans and in the box industry where we can where we can be honest. You, we don't you don't care about fighter safety, all right? And truth be told, most fans don't care about fighter safety. They don't. They act like they do when it comes to certain fighters they don't like, but they don't really care about fighter safety. Okay. So my thing is this: it's more dangerous. To, it, it is actually more dangerous for boxing to have the current structure. That it has now when it comes to drug testing then it will be that if, if you just let fighters take whatever they wanted to take as long as they um disclose it with the commission with a certain amount of time you know that way there would be transparency the opponent will know what's in the fighter system and they could take they could take some shit too if they wanted to and maybe the best fighter win on the night then it could be on an even playing field but then when you have this holier than thou approach where you say okay oh uh, 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 we're not going to take, uh, we, we want to clean up the sport. We want fair and clean boxing. And then, you know, behind closed doors, all the A-side fighters have an advantage and, or most A-side fighters have an advantage and they can just dope up whatever they want to and they won't get caught. You know, it's, it's, it's really putting, uh, people's lives at risk. And I just think boxing needs to really be real with itself. And I listen, I, I'm sure in about a week or two more weeks or another month, someone will fill a drug test and I'll have to make another video about a fighter failing a test, but that's just where I'm at right now. And those are my observations. And I really love this sport. And I, love, and, I and you know what, believe it or not, I actually love all the promotional companies because I have enjoyed fights from every promotional company, Matchroom, PBC, Top Rank, Golden Boy, Boxer, Pro Box TV, and all the other small promotional companies in the sport. So. I can't say I like one more than the other, and I can't say I hate one more than the other. I like them all, and I hate them all equally. And we just need to get to a place in boxing where we can really um, just be real. Just, just be real. Like, you don't care about drug testing. And um, you only care about drug testing when it's the B-side fighter. That's why Eddie Hearn, right? And I, I, this, is no, this is no hate or slight of Eddie Hearn. I got a lot, a lot of respect for him. He works his ass off. He's gotten to where he's gotten to working his ass off, right? Great promoter. But... Let's call a spade a spade. When when Jerome Miller failed a test, he 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 pointed fingers. His veins are popping out of his neck. He's turning about as red as a tomato, ready to ready to take on the world because Jerome Miller, you know, cheated. But then you know when it's Conor Ben, you don't got that same energy, you know. So it is what it is. I rambled long enough. You guys, give me a comment down below. Do you think Robert Hellenius took PEDs? Um, and, 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 and answer this question down below. Do you guys think I'm being a conspiracy theorist or am I making valid points about the fact that it's kind of concerning that matchroom fighters are the only ones failing drug tests with all the different agencies, whether it be drug-free sport or VOD? Uh, leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on the Untouchable True Sports Empire. We're here at the Hantanaka Boxing Gym in Nagoya, Japan. And uh, more great videos just like this one, make sure you guys click right here.